All right, it looks like it's leveled out, so let's get started. Thank you for joining us on a Friday afternoon. Um, I know for many it's been a busy, busy week uh, if you were an attendee of the uh, COAPE conference. And so I know there's been a ton of information if you're one of those folks thrown at you already. So thank you for making more time to fill your head with great ideas and information. Uh, today with us at our Distance Education Strategies and Solutions webinar. Um, as you may or may not know, this is a joint initiative between Pro Literacy and the EdTech Center at World Education, and this is the fifth such session. And today's session, we are really excited to uh, talk about a tool that I don't know if you're like me, but about a year ago, I had no idea what it was, and more and more I keep hearing about Google Jamboard. So we will be learning about how to use this as a effective tool for both distance education and for collaboration amongst your learners um, within remote learning environments. And so I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague at the EdTech Center, Evandros, to just walk through um, the Zoom controls that we'll be using today. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. For those of you that are unfamiliar with Zoom, you can find the control panel at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Uh, just hover your mouse down and it will pop up for you. To access the chat, click on the chat icon on the control panel and when you make comments, please select uh, to everyone or all panelists and attendees so that everyone can see your comments. To use the hand raise feature, you can click on the raise hand icon on the control panel, and that will get our attention for any tech related issues or uh, if you have any questions about uh, Zoom. And for content related questions, please use the Q&A feature so that uh, you can get your question answered about the material today. If you have any other questions, please email me at the email address below. Thank you. Great. Um, thank you, Ebony, for that. And so just a reminder for those of you who uh, have attended or if you have not attended, um, we will be sharing out afterwards to anyone who registered a recording of the webinar, uh, as well as a list of all of the websites and associated resources that get shared today. Um, the presentation slides will also be shared along with the transcript of the chat and Q&A and a certificate for your participation in the webinar today. So uh, the way this is going to work, uh, it's going to be very little of me talking and a lot of Pamela Jo Wilson, um, who is going to be leading us in her presentation on collaborative learning with Google Jamboards. She is an adult ESOL program curriculum support specialist down in Florida. Um, and then following her presentation, there will be a Q&A facilitated by Todd Evans from Pro Literacy. And so with that, I am going to hand it over to you, Pamela Jo. Um, you can take it away. Thank you, Todd, and good afternoon, everyone. Let me just take one second to get my screen shared. I am truly excited to be here, excited in a very nervous way, just to let you know I am always nervous when I do this, but I'm truly excited to be here as well. Ah, so yes, like they said, I'm going to be talking to you about Jamboard, and I want to say thank you to um, Todd and everyone at Pro Literacy and the EdTech Center for inviting me, and for to also to Lisa Anderson, a colleague of mine in Palm Beach County, who dropped my name in a room of opportunity. Uh, without much ado, let's get started. Oh, so how are you feeling right now? Go ahead in the chat, drop trepidation. I don't know. Happy. How are you feeling right now? Go ahead in the chat box right away. I want to see what the room is feeling like right now. Let's see what's going on. Happy, curious, not bad, feeling great. All right. This is great. Hungry. Oh boy. <laughs> curious, tired. Excellent. Wow, I love what I'm seeing in the chat box. This is great. Thank you. Excellent. But just in case we have anybody out there who may need just a little something something to get them started this afternoon, we're going to do a mini jam session. Yes, 
all pun is intended. All right, so we're gonna do a mini jam session. I hope that you notice that I am presenting already from Google Jamboard, okay? And we're gonna do a mini jam session right now. So I want you guys, I know I can't hear you because all of the microphones are muted. So I'm gonna give you the beat, okay? And I want you to, I'm gonna just imagine all of you following along with me with this beat. All right, listen along, listen along. about a what, two hows, the why, and the when. And by now, just two seconds in, you can already tell that I'm a teacher. And you can already tell that I am, if, you have, if you're aware of the disc, I'm a high I with a little S sprinkled in. All right, so by the end of this session, now that you have that music stuck in your head, by the end of this session, I want to have answered three questions and inspired to ask, inspire you to ask and answer two. The questions are, what is Jamboard? How does one create a Jamboard? How does one use Jamboard with their learners? And then your two questions, why should I use Jamboard? And when will I implement? So I am hoping to answer those three questions and then drive you to discover your why. You should even think about this resource. And then I'm hoping to fire you up so that you will leave here knowing when you are about to implement. All right, so we have our goals set. Let's get started with the what. So what is Jamboard? You're already experiencing Jamboard. So by now you know that it is a whiteboard and it's a free product from the Google platform. It is available on a personal Google account as well as business and enterprise accounts. So you, if you have a Gmail account personally, you can log on to your Gmail account and Jamboard will be there. It's represented by this yellow and orange icon and it's absolutely free. A part, it's a Google app. It's also wonderful for using in a synchronous environment on your virtual conferencing platform like we're doing right now on Zoom. And if you use Google Meet, which is what I use primarily with my um, learners or any other platform, you are able to share this whiteboard on those virtual conferencing tools. All right, something you should know right off the bat is that Jamboard has what's called frames. And we are limited to 20 frames. And right away, I am going to change this from slides to frames because frames is the technical language for Jamboard. We are also limited when we go on Jamboard to 25 participants, all right? So I wanna get that out there. And before we go any further, something else that I wanna do is cover some vocabulary as any good teacher will do. And you can notice that I've switched over to Google Doc and I'm copying my vocabulary. I'm gonna come back to my frame and open up a text box. and I'm going to put my vocabulary right in there. Because throughout this training, you're gonna hear me mention some of these words. Browser, window, tab, Google, application, apps, Google apps, Google apps, selector, the waffle or the nine dots button, which those are synonymous. The Google apps selector is synonymous with the waffle. as well as the nine dots button. Jamboard, jam, frames, 
Google Form, Google Slides, Immersive Reader, Bitmoji, and Emoji. You are going to hear me mention these words as we go along because it's important to understand, first of all, that your browser needs to be Google Chrome, and then you're going to need to use the Google App Selector in order to access the Jamboard, which is right here, okay? Another thing during this training is that when we start using Jamboard later on, you're going to need to know where your tabs are. So if you can look to the top of my screen where you see several tabs, we are going to end up toggling between your tabs. So it's very important for you to know where your Zoom tab is and then where the Jamboard tab is. But I will tell you more about that later. I just wanted to get that out of the way. So again, Jamboard is a whiteboard application. It's in the Google workspace. It is wonderful for synchronous and asynchronous. You can save this inside of your learning management system, Google Classroom, whatever you use for a learning management system. And you can also do live, live teaching as I'm showing you right now with Jamboard. Let's, let's keep going because I believe you understand what the what is right now. So, well, how do I create a Jamboard? How do I... How do I make a Jamboard? Thank you for asking. So same, similar, we go to our Google browser. And again, we go to our app selector. And we look for the J. We look for the J. I want you to notice that I, you're, I'm toggling back and forth between frames, which is indicated by this arrow at the very top. And I'm going back to frame seven because notice I had a call out that I created. I'm going to copy that call out. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to go back over here and paste it. And now I can use it to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So the other great feature about Jamboard, as you can see immediately, is that it is interactive. It is interactive. All right, and you can create different callouts using the Jamboard. So we have our, our window, our tabs, we have our, our arrows, and we have our frames that are indicated by the numbers at the very top. All right, and then once we, we can click the arrow down and it gives us a timeline of our frames so you can see exactly what frames you have created. You can actually move the frames around. Or you can click on these three dots and you can duplicate or delete. Now, as you can see, it will not allow me to duplicate because remember, we are limited to 20 frames and I've already used up my allotment of 20 frames, which you will see in just a second. So you just click on this up arrow or the down arrow to see all of your frames and to get further access to other tools about the frames. So to duplicate and delete, you can do that and see all your frames that are in your jam. Okay, so let's talk about some of the tools that are here. And to do that, I am going to, um, I am going to show you here how the tools work on the top as well as on the left. Of course, we, everyone needs an undo button. So these two arrows are your undo. And next to it is the magnifier or the zoom. Next is an, an um, icon that allows you to set the background. And we're going to talk more about that in a minute and do what I like to call glam the jam. And then this last option is to clear the frame. If you've created a lot of I, I, things on the frame, you can click clear the frame and everything will be gone, okay? Now let's take a look at the, the tools on the left. On the left, we have a pen that you can write with. You have different color options and you have paintbrush, highlighter, marker, and pen. So I can grab the paintbrush and I can actually mark up my whiteboard. Then I can go down to my eraser and erase what I don't want. Next is the arrow, and this is like a reset or a select option, because you will notice that when I click on the arrow, it resets all of the, the other two functionalities. So the arrow is very important. We wanna be able to reset 
Once we've selected something, we want to be able to reset by clicking on the arrow. All right, next we have post-it notes. And an example of the post-it note is already here with vocabulary, but to create your post-it notes, you simply click on the post-it notes options. You have five different colors to choose from, or you can do a zero color and you can type what you want to type here. Observe. You can type sentences, you can type list of words, and once you bring your post-it note in, you can resize, you can make it um, lean, and then you can also duplicate with the three dots. You can edit, duplicate, and delete, and something that's very important, you can order. You can send it in the background or bring it to the forefront of your frame. All right, so that's how the post-it note works. And then there are call-outs, and you will notice that I use the call-outs, the shapes, I call them call-outs. I use the shapes to do different things within my document, and you just select a shape, and you are able to create different things and color your shapes. And then you can also add text to your shapes. Which brings me to the next option, which is the text box. So the text box, you just click, click into a space on the whiteboard and then start typing. You can also change the color of your text by clicking on the A at the top. And you can change whether you want it to the left, align left, align center, or align right. So those are some basic hows of how you can create your, your um, Jamboard. And then you can use a laser to, to highlight while you're speaking to your students. Okay, let's continue. So how do I use this with my learners? How do I use this with my learners? I like to create activities such as click and drag activities. So in this example, and remember we have to activate, we have to deactivate our icons by clicking on the arrow. So with this activity, I've created a word bank and I've created the icon. So when I'm orienting my learners to Jamboard, I create the icons and I actually turn it into a lesson where now they are able to click and drag and match as I assess their learning. So I've taught the lesson on Jamboard, and now I wanna assess their learning. Oh, I just noticed that I didn't tell you about image. All right, image is, um, I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So then I can create a click and drag or drag and drop activity using the Jamboard and give my learners this activity as an evaluation or an assessment. I have several of these created, and of course, it depends on the level of the learner, because I may want to take it as far as, okay, what is number one? Number one is a pen, and have them now identify the images and even label, label the table, label the table by clicking and dragging. So I have three different versions of this assessment that I've created within Jamboard. And it depends again on the level of your learners. But the idea here is that you can actually take that blank whiteboard and add an image, embed an image into the whiteboard so that it's not movable, and then add a work bank and other items to a word bank so that your learners can now do click and drag, click and drag, okay? The other way that I use, um, Jamboard for my class is that I share the lesson in the learning management system, as mentioned before. So I actually start out my lesson with the Jam because like I said, I use Google Meet and Google Meet has the Google Jam built into the Meet. So I'm able to create a Jam and while we're learning, we actually create the Jam together and then I post the Jam into Google Classroom so that if a student missed class, they're able to go in and see that jam. I also create an ebook from the jam because once you create your jam, you have the option of coming up to the three dots, the more actions button 
on the upper right hand corner and selecting download as PDF. And it will download your jam as if it's an ebook. I call it an ebook when I want to tell my learners that we're going to write a book. Okay, so let's go take a look at what this looks like in real time. This is an example of a jam created with my students where we were practicing sentence structures. In this example, you can see where I had a student. I really celebrate them when they get on the first time because as you know, technology is really a challenge for our learners. So this first, the student got on for the first time and the challenge for them here was after our lesson, they needed to come on and write a, a positive statement and then write the negative, um, negative um, version of that statement. So you can see here where each student had their own frame. They came on and shared this frame with them, shared a jam with them, and they had their own frame. They found a frame and they were able to write sentences and then write the negatives to the sentences. So this is an example. And one student took it this far. She uploaded a picture or an image, which can be done by, let me show that now. You can click here, add image and you have the option of searching for Google image or selecting an image from your drive or from your file manager on your computer. So this learner uploaded an image of herself and it, images of her examples when she was doing the positive and the negative in the lesson. And so these are examples of what learners can do on Jamboard because it is so interactive. Here's another example. This is a family tree. And so we reviewed the lesson and in class, we went over and for this one, I actually did a breakout room in the learning um, in the virtual conferencing tool. We had a breakout room in the virtual conferencing tool and they were grouped by, um, they were small, they were placed in small group and one of the students shared the screen and they were to complete the activity together. And so they completed the activity together and we came back and took a look at it. So you can see here where we had several groups and they did that activity. Another um, activity, um, still talking about family relationships. This was the actual lesson before we did the, the, um, the activity and they had to list, they had to come on and list different types of relationships. So it was shared with them and they came in and list different types of relationships. So this is where I introduced the lesson that we saw previously before they went out into small group. And this is where I also gave them a, an assignment to create a family tree and post to the classroom. Another example here is introducing Venn diagram. The, the <laughs> Introducing the Venn diagram, and for this one, I did use the circle to try to create the Venn diagram, and I used the pen to draw the line. However, um, for the next part of it, I actually um, brought in actual Venn diagrams that I made a part of the image. And as you can see, I brought in their flags just to make just to make that make it, you know make that connection for them. So that what I did with it, when I did this activity was that I, I did not tell them about the flags. I just said, scroll through and look for your, find your spot. So all my students that were from different countries recognized their flags and it was their um, opportunity to com compare education system between their country and the United States of America. And then once they um, compared it, they had to complete the sentence frames as well. So this is a sentence frame after the comparison, okay? And of course I did mine to model first and then release them to do theirs. So that's another activity and that's another way you can use Jamboard by bringing in GIFs to make it just that more lively. Here's the example of the ebook that I mentioned. Once we were finished with our um, lesson for the night. Now, some of the additions I did post the lesson like um, some of the call outs I did before I put it in the Google Classroom. However, um, the content was the learner coming on. I provide, um, this is a review and they had to come on and create sentences. And then another learner had to go in and answer the sentence. And of course I was providing the support along the way. We talked about cognates. This was my, um, my Iranian student, she came in and she dropped um, what the word is in her language, which I thought was so nice. <laughs> and then, um, so this is just an example of how I turned it into a PDF.
so that when I posted it to the Google Classroom, it, it, it showed up like an ebook. Okay. And then, how's my time? I'm sorry. I hope I'm not rushing too much. How's my time doing, Tom? You're great. Sorry, I was sorry. on mute. You're, you're in great shape. You're oh, great good. Shape. Very good. So um, that's the bulk of what I wanted to show you in terms of um, some of the things, what it is, um, how you create it, and, um, and how I use it in my classroom. Now, I have this saying that I like to say about um, Glam in the Jam because a recent upgrade that they made to Jamboard is um, the opportunity to do what I just showed you when I started. So let's, let's go ahead and use this functionality that allows me to scroll through the jam. Oh, before I go back, let me continue. Let me continue. There's, there's something else I want to show you. All right. Almost forgot this. All right. So we're able to use different things in here. As you can see, I can go to a document and, and copy and paste um, text inside of um, Google Jamboard. As long as I utilize the text box, I can just click on the text box and paste the text within Google Jamboard. Now, there's another feature that I love to use called Immersive Reader. It is not a Google product. It is actually a Microsoft product. However, there is a Google Chrome extension that can be um, added to your Chrome browser. Or if you have Microsoft, you have that built in. But with Immersive Reader, I am able to click on the text box and highlight the text. And then I have it here, Immersive Reader. I, um, sorry, let me go back. Highlight the text, oops, right click and click on Help Me Read This. Because I have the extension installed, once I have the extension installed, all I need to do is highlight whatever text I'm going to use that is on a tab. It has to be a, a tabbed text. And click Help Me Read This. And this allows me now to provide further support for my learners from um, inside the Jamboard. So now you can see that Immersive Reader has taken the text and brought it into its platform. And now I can play the text. Computer skills have become essential in today's world. And I'm not sure if you're hearing it Students because I use a variety of technology tools such as calculators, cell phones. I can change the speed on the text or the voice on the text simply by clicking here. I can make it faster or slower and I can make it female or male. Right now we're listening to a female. So that's one of the features of Immersive Reader. Another feature of Immersive Reader, if we click on the tools in the upper right-hand corner, all right, I'm waiting on it to process. This is in Hindi. Another feature is that we can change the text size, make it smaller, bigger. We can increase spacing between the lines or decrease the spacing by turning that off. We can change the font and we can also change the background color by clicking here. Now we understand that sometimes we have to accommodate learners and sometimes it's easier for them to read black, white text on black background. So this allows you to change color, the background of the color with this first tab, okay? The second tab, allows you to do syllabication. So if I turn this on, it will turn the words, create the syllables for the words. I can also turn on or off parts of speech. So if I wanted my learners to just identify the parts of speech, I could turn on the nouns. Oops. Oh, here we go, we're a little slow. I could turn on all the nouns or the verbs or the adjectives. I could just ask them to identify it and then do the check-in. Or I could, I could start with them all identified and then just point that out depending on the level of my learners, all right? So we can do syllabication and we can also do parts of speech with this function in Immersive Reader. Another part is, and this is also good for helping our learners, we can change our text to one line of text and scroll down. We can do three lines, 
we can do multiple lines. We can change the line focus for the lower level learners where we may need to just reduce the, the, the concentration of the text. This is very useful. And then we also have a picture dictionary. So there are some words here that we can click on. For example, computer. And it looks like I have the translator, which I'm going to next in Hindi. But you have a picture dictionary that's built in. And of course, my favorite, the translate. We're able to translate by word. Let's go with Haitian Creole. We can translate by word. Or we can translate the entire document. And I've done activities where I've started with the document in the native language and just wanted to assess if they were able to translate back to English. So these are some really neat features from Immersive Reader. Again, it's a Google Chrome extension if you don't use the Microsoft product that you can add to your Chrome and you're able to access that from Google Jamboard. And I just do the back arrow and I'm back to my jam. So to provide further support on the Jamboard, I usually use the Immersive Reader. Okay, let's keep going. So here are some other things we can do. Uh, same concept, click and drag, but this is on a blank frame. And I'm going to take this opportunity to show you how I um, change the background and make the background be a still frame. So I can do set background and click here on image. And I can do a Google image search, or you can get it from your computer, whatever you want. I like waterfalls, as you can tell. So waterfall, I'll do a waterfall. Let's do this one. And do set frame background. And while it's, while it's processing, we can just click and drag you create a shape and they can click and drag. But if you also wanted to make this your background, that is set background, you could click on the three dots at the top and select make the frame an image and, and, and use that image to add back into your Jamboard. So that's taking a little bit to process. Let's keep going and come back to it. Some people that I wanted to mention that we can learn from, this is, I consider this my professional learning network on Twitter um, that I follow, Miss Esther Park. She's amazing. And um, Sam Kirby and also Matt Miller with Ditch That Textbook are also people that I follow. But now that we have explored this somewhat, I want to be able, I want to drop um and maybe todd if you could help me with this i want to give you the opportunity to now interact with the jamboard with a special activity just for you so we are going to drop some links into the chat box there's my image it's finally made it in so this is how you do a fixed image in the background i like to call it glam the jam you can put whatever image you you want into that so i would like us to do, now do a hands-on and go into the jams and try to interact with the jams and we are going to drop um, some links into the chat. We have several because again, it's limited to 25 participants per Jamboard. So I'm going to ask you to jump onto a jam and if it says it's not available, just jump onto another link, a different link and go ahead and jump onto a Jamboard. Now, once you get onto the Jamboard, here's what I want you to do. I would like you to find a frame that's not occupied by somebody else. So find a frame where you don't see anyone else. The frames are going to look like this and you're going to use the left, the right arrow to scroll through and you claim that property. Go ahead and put your name on there, either with a post-it note or with a text box. So this is where I get to see if you remember how to do the post-it note. So claim that property, put your name in the upper right-hand corner, either with a post-it note or a text box, okay? And then let's do what I like to call clue. We didn't do a KWL at the beginning as is, as is typical. What I wanna find out from you as you practice on the jam right now is what didn't you know prior to this session? What did you learn as a result of this session? And what question do you still have as a result of this session. 
And then of course, did you discover why? Did you discover that why that we did that mini jam session about in the beginning? Did, can you answer, why would I want to use this with my learners? What benefit is this? How can my learners benefit from this? How can this help me in my, in my delivery of my lessons? And then when? Are you fired up to implement this? When? Are you going to do it tomorrow? Wait, tomorrow's Saturday. Are you going to do it on Monday? When will you implement this? So go ahead for me and fill out this graphic organizer, which I have embedded and made into a fixed image in the background like I showed you how to do. So you can actually create or grab a graphic organizer from anywhere that's an image and make it a fixed image on your uh, Jamboard. And then you can utilize that as an interactive activity with your learner. So I'm going to go into my activity bank, which is where I have copies of all the jams. And so while my learners are working, I am able to jump into the jam. So let's see who we have in copy one. Hi, I'm Coral Marie. Hi, Coral. Nice. I see that. All right, let me go. Hello, if I can just interrupt. So I've posted the five links for the first mm -hmm. five jam boards in the chat or listed copy one, two, three, four, and five. So just, I'm encouraging everybody click on one of those links, go to the Jamboard, as Pamela said, uh, uh, claim your Jamboard, and then fill out her form. And some of you are already doing that. Yes. Fantastic. Yes, I see that. Wow, nice. Jamboard is free. I got it. All right. Nice, Janet. Thank you. So this is, I'm just modeling here how I operate with this with my learners, because I do exactly what I just showed you. I create, um, multiple jams, or if your class is small, you don't need multiple copies of the jam. You just need one jam. But what I tell them is get on that jam and claim your frame, claim your frame, put your name on the frame. Okay. Name your frame. That's your property. So that if someone else comes on, they know to keep moving. All right. And then I can watch, as you can see, I'm looking at copy number one. I'm going to open copy number two. And then this is how I monitor, I monitor what's taking place inside of the Jam breakout rooms. All right, so here we go. This is copy number two. Let's see, we have a few people on here. Arlene, I knew nothing about Jamboard that I will check this out asynchronously. How do students participate? Do it, see it happening? Does the teacher see it? Yes, that's what I'm doing right now. So right now I am, scroll i have the jam open and i scroll through while i'm sharing it on the virtual conferencing tool now this goes back to one of the vocabulary words that i used earlier on with the tab because i orient my learners to the fact that at the top of their window they have tabs so once they go to the jam board and then i i, I tell them to come back to the meet or the virtual conferencing platform they know how to toggle from one tab toggle away from the jam board and back into the meet. So as a teacher, I am sharing in the virtual meet. I'm sharing on the virtual conferencing tool, the tabs, the jam boards that are open and the learners can see when they return to the, to the meet or when they toggle over back to the virtual conferencing tool. So like you're seeing it right now, I, we're looking at copy two and now we're looking at copy one. So I can scroll through copy one and you can see what Kirsten has done. And you can see what Debbie has done. So it's similar with the learners. Okay, how can I create a nice Don? Thank you. Excellent. Someone imported an image. Somebody changed my background. That's good. <laughs> that's excellent. All right, great job. So that's two. After I have, after I practice a lot, keep people active, helps learning. Exactly. Exactly, keeps people moving active and helps learning, makes lessons more fun, especially for visual learners. Exactly. And if you keep them active and involved and, and once, once you say, let's jam or let's do a jam, once you have acclimated them to this tool, immediately they jump on and they start participating. So I use it for my writing practice I also use it for what I call small talk conversation. 
I start my conversation in the gym and I write whatever they tell me. To write. I, I literally transcribe everything they're saying. And sometimes I use it as a, as a sentence, as a, I use text box as like um, sentence stems. And then I, I scramble it and then they have to put it in the right order. So there, there are so many things that you can do with this. Um, I wish I could go more into the glamming, but, but that may have to be another session. <laughs> but there's a lot more that you can do with this. But for right now, at the basic level, you can get your learners interacting and, and engaged. And that's a challenge online, the engagement and the interaction. And this is a very simple way of making that happen. All right, let's see if I can open another one, number three. And as you can see, my best practice is that I, I put all of my copies into one folder. So I can, I can actually see from my folder that the first five ones are the ones that are active because I can see the changes right here. So let's see what's going on in number three. Oh, I love that flower. Nicely done, Teresa and Marie. Very interactive, Rhonda. All right, excellent. Anonymous Rhino, <laughs> good point, Anonymous Rhino. Because I've shared this, because you were not invited or you're not on, on my um, network, yes, it will come up as anonymous, um, anonymous names. Hence, the request to put your name on the frame. Name that frame, put your name on the frame. And I try to make it fun. I try to tell them you're getting land. This is your land. So claim your land. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Anonymous Writer. Some funny names do come up, though, once you're doing this. All right, great. Empower students to have agency. Exactly. Exactly. I do PD. I see some possibility. Exactly. So no one's this on this one. Thank you, Rhonda. Very good. Excellent. So I just hope it, it is going to take some playing with. Go ahead and play with it. That's how I learned to do this. I just, um, once they come out with these tools, I grab a hold of it. I start experimenting and playing. And again, there are some people on um, social media, that the, the names that I mentioned before, who are doing amazing things, that um, it's a great idea to follow them. Okay, so with that, that concludes what I have. Are prepared for the for my um, time allotted and um, just wanted to close out with a quote that when everything seems to be going against you remember that the airplane takes off against the wind and not with it thank you so much for your time thank you very much thank you Pamela Joe and we've got some great uh, questions here from people and I think uh, people really enjoyed um, the opportunity to actually get in and play around and do some posting. I know when uh, you and I talked and you showed me all the stuff that you uh, uh, can do, I was uh, flabbergasted. I think kind of your your best advice is just to get in and play with it. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's how you learned and that's a great way to learn. And I just want to remind people, we will be sharing the recording and the slides and all the information from the webinar. Uh, next week. And so those links of the three people that she follows, that will be in the uh, slides that we share with you. So you'll be able to access those uh, resources as well. Okay, so we've got some great questions. The first one is from uh, Charlotte. And she just asked, can you show your face while Jamboarding? Uh, your face is actually going to be in your virtual conferencing room. So unless you split your screen and you have half of your screen showing your virtual meet room and the other portion, and you don't even have to have half. You can put a little, you know, you can, you can shape it any way you want to and then have the jam on one side if you're sharing your entire screen right now and then have your um, image on the other side of it. So not within the jam. Not within the jam itself, but you can arrange your screen so that your half your virtual conferencing tool is on one side and the jam is on the other side. And that's and that's what I thought. And I was just going to say to people, we don't show uh, our presenters' faces because it helps with the bandwidth. Right. You know, people are are listening to the webinar and watching the webinar in different bandwidths. But certainly in a class, if you're using Google Meet or Zoom or what have you, and you're accustomed to sharing your 
video, the students would see the screen typically and then see an insert of, of your face as you're talking and walking them through it. Um, and I think we've answered this other um, question from Charlotte, which is, can you invite students to write something on the Jamboard? Absolutely. You showed how to do that by when you create a Jamboard, you create a link, you share that link with students and mm -hmm. they can write just like our participants did. Right. You just have to sh um, make sure your share settings is set at edit. Okay. Make them not viewer only, but editor. So that's the, that's the, um, the key. So that's the key to making sure that students can edit what you created. Yes, and I have that here. And I really like this, being able to drop this down and go straight to. So this is what it looks like when you get ready to share. You have to drop the link down and make sure this says editor. Otherwise it will be viewer and they won't be, they will only be viewing. Okay, and that's important also when you share into your Google Classroom when you share, and I'm going to um, go quickly into my Google Classroom. When, when you share inside your Google Classroom, you want to make sure that it's set at edit so that when you share the, the work, that they, can, um, that they can edit when they get the, the, um, the jam and when they get into their frames. And also so that you can share individual jams with your students. Excellent. Excellent. We have a couple of questions about use on the cell phone. So uh, just in general, does Jamboard work well for students who are on cell phones? Is it usable on phones with a syn synchronous activity like you just did? Do you have students that are accessing it on cell phones? And just Do talk a little know, bit about that. You know what? Um, I had a student that told me once that they had to download uh, the app for Jamboard on the phone. They had to do it on their app. Mm -hmm. So I am not, I have not tried it. So I'm going to make a note to try it on my cell phone to see how it works. But I was told that there was an app that you can download and it helps. I have not had any problems with putting it in the Google Classroom for them to access, which I know they have the Google Classroom app on their phones. So that's a great question. And I am going to make sure that I can have a definite answer. But for now, I don't have a definite answer for that one. Okay, okay. And I would encourage um, whoever asked that question to, to try it out. I think that's always important to, you know, as you said, kind of download the Jamboard app and see what the experience is like for, you know, would be like for a student. Um, we have another question. Uh, how do students get access to my Jamboard? She says, I'm using Zoom for teaching my students. I've only used Google Slides before. And I think we've I think we've answered that. It really is just about sharing the links. And how do you, you said you share the links by posting them on Google Classroom. Yes, I share the link, but in the virtual conferencing, just dropping it in the chat like we did. The key to that is that you need to have a Google account. You need to have a Google because that's the only way that you can create the jam. Once you create the jam and you drop the link into the chat, they should be able to access it. And that's an important point. The students who are going to edit it, they don't need to have a Google account, correct? They just need the link and the uh, jam to be set to be edited. Yes, as far as I know, and, and you know, that's another good one for me to clarify because my learners, oh yes, that's right. Because you know what, that's why we, we um, share with anyone that has the link. Right. That's why we got the anonymous, um, anonymous um, rhino and anonymous camel, because if they're accessing it outside of that with like Yahoo or something, as long as you share anyone with the link, then they're able to. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. We have a question from Stephen that asks, uh, since Microsoft's new Edge browser is based on Google Chrome, Ooh. will Edge work as well? Or does it have to be, do you have to access them through a Chrome browser? What a great question. I'm going to have to check that out because I, I'm not sure because I've not used Microsoft Edge. I've not that's used a, it. So I, that's something to explore. You know what? And I'm going to ask Stephen if, uh, since Stephen is on the webinar, if Stephen, if you would go back and take one of those links to the five Jamboards that Pamela Joe created 
and just post one into an Edge browser and see if you can play around with it and then come back and let us know by posting in the in the chat. That would be great. But I think the best way is to kind of experiment. Yes, definitely. But I do know the advantage of having your Microsoft is that you have a built-in immersive reader. You don't need the extension. <laughs> right, right, right. If you that. were accessing it in, in uh, Microsoft Edge. And I think that answers um, Arlene's question as well, which was, do students have to use Chrome to use it? Um, we're going to try to find that out. And uh, But Chrome is also available on any Android phone or any uh, uh, Apple phone as well. So. Right, right. And then, and then the, the I, I think we did answer because if you share it with that, anyone with a link can get in, they will get in. It's just that you won't recognize their names because they come in like anonymous rhino, anonymous camel, if they don't have the, if they're not on your um, Google network. Excellent. But that's okay. And that's why we say put your name on the, on the frame so that we can know who is in the chat. Right, right. <laughs> Um, our next question is, can you show us again, how do you put an image in the background? Okay, so that great. idea of creating an image that doesn't move around. Great question. And, and right now I'm on a frame that is actually, uh, and, and please don't hurt me if I pronounce this wrong. I know it's a controversial word. <laughs> G-I-F. <laughs> <laughs> that word. <laughs> GIF. <or> GIF. GIF. <laughs> The image that you're looking at right now is a GIF GIF <laughs> that you can, that's actually a part of the background. And I created, the, I just grabbed this off of Canva and um, downloaded, the, downloaded it as a, a GIF and just um, uploaded it into this as the background. You can also do the same thing. You can create um, a, a GIF or GIF on um, Google Slides and do the same thing. Or you could just search the web like the activity that I had with their flags, those are just that I got off the web and I just put it on there as image. So, okay, I'm gonna show you both ways for both the um, embedded image that does not move and the other image that does move. So let's, um, let's since we already did this jam session, I'm gonna delete this slide so I can work on the same slide. And again, if you wanna delete a slide because I'm at my max of um, 20, I can do this and hit delete. And then right away, I can just add back in a blank frame, okay? And I'm at my 20 and I'm good. See, it says you can't create any more frames. Okay, I got the message. So here's my blank frame. To set a background, an unmovable background, I have several ways that I do it because sometimes I actually create my um, closed exercises here or my fill in the blank exercises here. And then what I do is I click here, and save the frame as an image. And then I go and I set background and go search for that image. So I'm gonna go here, say upload, and I'm going to go to my folder. Let's see if I have what I have here that I can pull up. Go to my folder and find an image. And here, okay, perfect. I found a frame that I created for a different um, training. I can drag that in. And now I have a background that um, they can fill in without moving it around. They can actually create my name. And this was a bad image because this is one that I was training on Jamboard about. But once you create that um, image, it won't have all of the, the surrounding images. But anyway, so they can create the text and put it anywhere, but they won't be able to move the background unless they hit set background and they change that, okay? But this is how you create that. And you can duplicate that and do my name is Pam, etc. cetera, all right? Now, another way to do it, of course, is to go set background, check image, and you have all of these options. You can go to do an image search. So sometimes I do an image search and I'll be like, okay, Colombian flag.
and you have to play around with it because sometimes it doesn't bring it up immediately. But find an image that's moving, and then you just click on the image and bring it in. I don't know what flag that is. Background. And now the entire background is that flag and they won't be able to move it. Okay, so as long as you use set image and this option, your background is gonna be set without moving. Now, if you use um, the image that's on the left, the button that's on the left to add image, it's the same function, but this is an image now that if you wanted to bring in, if you wanted to do a vocabulary assessment and you wanted to bring in chair, the picture of a chair, so that you can write the word chair and do like matching activities. You can bring in several images and have the words on the right and then they have to match it to the image. Now I'm gonna change my background to just plain, change it back, it's still working. But you get the idea. So if you want it to be a moving image, you use the image icon on the side, on the toolbar on the side. But if you want it to be a fixed image, you do set background and plus image. Okay. And the image you can create your own or get it on the internet. I like to take pictures. Sometimes I take my pictures, my own pictures, and I'll upload those so that they, you know, that they're authentic to what my the thought is I want to communicate. So there's a chair. Now I can create a um, word, create the word, several pictures, and they have to match. Okay. And I really love the call outs, at, like you saw in one of my, um, activities, I use the call outs a lot in the classroom because, um, because that way I can help the learner to just focus on whatever it is I'm saying. So if I wanna make sure they're looking at chair, I pull this in, but it has the white background. So I have to change here. I can change that to transparent or I can change it to yellow, but click on these three dots and send it to the back so that it's still yellow and the chair is highlighted, okay? And the arrows are fun too. <laughs> the only thing is that if you cannot type text into the, the images, you have to get a text box and put it inside those um, call outs. Okay, look up. Okay, Pamela, Joe, if I can get you to pause right okay. here we are coming to the top of the hour. And so I wanted to let uh, Jeff share his screen real quick so we can remind people of our upcoming webinars. And then to remind people that Pamela Joe has agreed to kind of stick around for a few minutes after the uh, top of the hour to make sure everybody's questions get answered. So if you have a question, please get that into the Q&A box now. Uh, and then we will kind of, uh, share our upcoming webinars and get back to Pamela Joe. And for those of you who have to leave, uh, thank you for coming. For those of you who wanna stick around and hear Pamela Joe's answers, you can, you are welcome to do that. So you see some upcoming webinars from Pro Literacy. Uh, we have uh, several series. So these are kind of the upcoming webinars in each of those series, but you can go to proliteracy.org slash webinars and find a schedule of all of our webinars. I think we have them scheduled throughout uh, June or so. And then uh, Jeff. I was muted. Thank you, Pamela Joe. That was so good. I've, I've, I've been using Jamboard and just learned so much from you. So I'm excited to try out uh, more things. But um, just to let you know, the next, again, this is part of an ongoing series with the EdTech Center. And we also do second Friday of the month distance education strategy sessions. Really excited about our next one, which will be Friday, April 9th, same time. Um, and it is going to be on defining and navigating digital skills. So we're gonna have two speakers at this one doing lightning talks. Uh, one is Stacy Wedlake from the Seattle Digital Equity Initiative focused on a digital skills framework that they developed after doing a extensive scan of all the different digital literacy curriculum and assessments that are out there, followed by uh, the EdTech Center's own Priyanka Sharma, who is going to be talking about a digital, um, digital navigator toolkit 
and Digital Navigator Resource Hub that we recently released that provides all sorts of tools to help you develop uh, digital skills with your students uh, or in, in non-traditional educational settings, develop digital skills and providing resources to support both um, internet access and device access. Uh, also, just note that we also have our distance education, uh, transforming distance education micro learning course, which is freely available. And um, that will be included here in the slides that are sent out. And finally, um, the next uh, one of these joint webinars will be the fourth Friday of April. I cannot believe we're already hitting <laughs> talking about the end of April, um, April 23rd at 1 Eastern. Uh, and that is going to be a really exciting one as well. We'll be looking at the Literacy Action Center um, of New York City and a framework that they developed for supporting and providing technical assistance to all of their um, organizations within their network around training on the different digital skills that people are, digital tools that organizations are using for video conferencing, for whiteboard for assessment and, and other tools. So they've created a really nice framework to basically build out um, uh, resources for their providers and for the students within their network. And so really hope that you can join for that one as well. And that's it um, for me. All right, fantastic. Jeff, if you'll stop sharing your screen and we'll get back to uh, Pamela Jo sharing so uh, she can, uh, kind of wrap up answering. We've got a few more questions and there, there are some great ones. So uh, again, thank you all for joining us. If you want to stick around and hear Pamela Joe's answers, you're welcome to do so. If not, we will see you next month. All right, Pamela Joe, we've got uh, three more questions. So one is from Arlene. How did you generate that link that you shared with us that we clicked on to do the activity? That was just clicking that share button. Exactly, correct? that is correct. I just clicked on share. So let me go back to the image because I do have an image in the presentation that shows it, but I kind of glanced right over it. So once you click share, it's going to ask you um, if you want to share with anyone on, the, it's, it gives you what, what, how you want to limit that. So you can, um, you can have specific students to share it with the students or you can make it anyone. So because there were different people here, I just made it anyone. But yes, you do have the option and you have the option of making it viewer only or editor. So let me actually show that to you live. So this button on top here that says share, we can just click that. And it's loading, that's what I was afraid of. And that's okay. We can wait. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So you get the idea. You just get, once you click share, you just select how you want to share that, and then you copy the link and you drop it either in your um, Google Classroom, wherever you want to share from. You could drop if you if you use WhatsApp, drop it into WhatsApp. You know, wherever you want to share the link from, you can then share the link. Right. So you can you can take that that link. Once mm -hmm. you've copied it, you can drop it in WhatsApp. You can yes. share it in an email. Yes. Your students, you can text it to them, however yes. it is that you would normally communicate information. Fantastic. Right. And so as many jams as you produce, you just get all the copy. You just get all the links and label them so you can give instructions. You can call. It's like, I like to think of it as, as jam breakout. So you can label it fruits. You can label it colors. Okay. You need to go to the red room, go to the red jam, go to the banana jam and make it fun. And then uh, kind of what you were talking about, a uh, question from Karen. She asked, if you wanted to make an activity for your whole class to do, mm -hmm. would you create one frame and then duplicate it for each student? That's exactly what I did, yes. On each of those copies, I made one frame. And you can see I went in and I was responding to some of the questions. Um, that's another thing that you can do. So I just created one frame and then you do the drop down where you can see all the frames. Click on the more button, which is those, the caterpillar or the three dots, and that allows you to duplicate. Mm -hmm. So I just duplicated them based on um, how many people I, I anticipated being in the room. And then um, you share it. And then, and then you, you can, mm -hmm. you can label people's jam if you have a specific one that you want them to go to, or I think what you did with us is just have us go and claim 
one of the slides yes or one of the frames and yes. uh put our name on it exactly and that i did that intentionally because i want the learners to be custom to the if digital literacy skills being able to identify that arrow and understand that if you click that arrow it's going to go right or it's going to go left or it's going to drop down and then also practicing using the text box to type their name so i try to to, to make it very autonomous so that they they're able to do some of these things independently after practicing it for a few times all right fantastic we got um have you used jam boards with math instruction at all no i haven't but it um but i could see it working definitely i think what if you go look at those some of those social media um, people that I recommended, you'll see that it's been used uh, for many different things. I'm an ESOL teacher, so I'm, I primarily do, um, you know, things that are English related, but we do have math. So the only difference is that I would change this to math. And then, and then something you could do with math is just get the text box and put one number in the text box. Do the other number in the text box. You could you, just follow the same principle, 100 times 100 is equals a thousand just create as many text box and create your formulas using the text box scramble it you know so you can you can also do that with the learners or or you give them a problem and then they have to come into the jam and write the problem themselves so it really is just like any other whiteboard even if you're in school just consider it the whiteboard that we we are missing from brick and mortar mm -hmm. So whatever you did there, you can actually do here on, in a digital way. That makes sense. That makes sense. And um, last question, can you walk us through the steps that you use to create that drag and drop activity? Oh, okay. Okay, so let me go back. I need to find a jam because I, of course, I've used up all my frames. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find one that does not have that many frames. Or, you know what, there is one here that not many people were on. So I'm going to go into that one. Like this is one, this one was not used. So I can, um, I can refresh my frame and make it, take it back to white frame. And so the activity that I did, I'm going to go to this document. I'm going to show you exactly how I did this. Let me go to my document that I have online. I actually used a Word document to create that. Or okay. you could use an Excel document. And um, I have my little cheat sheet here for my planning for the session. So you're going to get to see all of that. Here it is. Um, so I have my Word document. It's a Word document that I use. Mm -hmm. And then I, um, here we go, here we go. All right, so all I did was, as you can see, this is what I used. I um, did insert table, insert table, and I determined how many columns I want, and there's my table, okay? okay. So then if I want several rows, like for instance this, this is actually three rows that I merged. I merged each of these into one, but I knew I wanted two here. So I had to do one, two, three rows. And then the three rows, I just merged them. Okay. So if you want whatever chart you want to create, you could just use the, um, use the insert table and create your columns. And then after I was done creating this, I used the snipping tool. Mm -hmm. The snipping tool and go new. And I snipped it. Oh, I gotta make sure my my um let's position this the right so I can get it. That's right. There we go. Snipping tool, new, and I snipped it. Okay. And the snipping tool, everybody that has like yeah. uh, Windows 10 computer has the snipping tool. Should have that. Anything where you can capture that image. And then I'd go right back to my document. Okay, here we go. And I can do Control V and it pastes it right there, mm -hmm. but it is it is moving. It's a movable picture at this point. It's still a movable picture. I don't want it to be movable. So what I do once I put it in the jam and I make sure it's positioned the way I want it to position, 
Then while it's loading, then I go to the three dots and I say, save that frame as an image. Okay. Okay. And then I add it back in as set background. Okay. All right. And so, so then that's going to post it and still leave you white space on the right hand side to exactly. put your list of things to drag over. Exactly. Exactly. The word bank was created the same way with the tables. I created the word bank, save the frame as an image, pull it back in as the background. And then I added my text using the text block because I wanted them to be able to move the text. I see. So I just I see. put Okay. Right. And those, uh, the things that they're dragging and dropping, that could be text boxes, it could be sticky notes, it, it, it could, could be any of Images, the, yes. Like right here. Images connecting to vocabulary. Exactly. Because in this particular one, I was trying to um, teach how the different tools on the left-hand side. And this was my way now of evaluating whether or not they got it. So when you click on the pen, what will you see? Are you going to see different types of pens and the different color inks. When you click on the shapes, what do you see? You're going to see circle square. How about the post-it note? Okay, the, and there's two here for the post-it note. This is the eraser. This is the pointer. This is another one for pen. And the blank space is a text box. And I believe I have image right there. And the arrow just usually resets. Whatever you selected, the arrow will reset to neutral. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and then our last request, and then we'll um, let everybody go, is just would you mind showing the slide again that had all of the people that you follow, those three oh, key people? Sure. I think we wanted to give people a chance to kind of see yes. who those folks were. Yes. Oh, I, this particular, um, this is one of my favorite things that Ms. Parks has created recently, the sentence structure, mm. how you could create. She, and she does essentially the same thing. She creates the frames in the background and then you're able now to move and create sentences. And then um, this is very new um, because of course there were upgrades to Jamboard. So these two guys are amazing and they're on YouTube. Ms. Parks is on um, Twitter, but I also have their websites here. Oh, excellent, excellent. All right, and just to remind everyone that is sticking around that uh, we will send you the slideshow so you'll have this and the recording, so you'll have this information uh, when you cool. get the follow-up email next week. So thank you, Pamela Joe. This was a fantastic presentation. Uh, we love your excitement around Jamboards. I think you've gotten a lot of people here excited about Jamboards, and I expect a lot of people to go back and start using these with students. What a great interactive tool. Wonderful, yes. Thank you. All right. Thank so you. let me say to everyone, thank you for joining us. Everybody have a great rest of the day and a fantastic weekend.